Hello there, motherfuckers. So I just got done watching Civil War, Captain America Civil War. And I really need to ask a question here about this title. Is this a Captain America movie? Because you could have fooled me. This was a Avengers 3. This was just an excuse to get another Avengers movie out there. All the characters were in it, with the exception of Hulk. All the Avengers were in there, everybody. And you know what just kills me? It's the hypocritical Marvel fanboys out there. And I'm telling you, I'm definitely telling you, Disney must be paying off the critics. 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, you know, everybody giving this a positive review, you know, okay, it's not the worst movie ever, but I'm gonna have to say this right now, uh, um, I don't know what I liked better, Age of Ultron or this movie, I, I, I'm, I'm seriously, I am actually debating that within my head right now, now this is just the first impressions, I gotta take some time, I gotta, you know, mold it over in my head, um, I, you know, I gotta get a good night's rest, I've been up since fucking 5 a.m., you know, I, I, I've gotta really, you know, think this over, and also this is not the official review, this is just like a little bit of a lead, and I'll have a complete review maybe tomorrow, maybe in the next couple of days, you know, once I get my thoughts together a little bit, but pretty much, uh, based on my first impressions, of this movie and just being about two hours removed from the film i i just i really wasn't that entertained and i had so many problems with this movie such as the villain i mean they couldn't have picked a blander villain and i know that they didn't want to pick anybody too you know huge and massive because it probably would have overshadowed the main focal point of the story the civil war with the avengers uh, this movie should have just been called marvel civil war should have been called avengers civil war why was it captain america you know the thing is when i thought of captain america and i saw captain america 3 coming out or just pretty much after Winter Soldier. I was so excited for the next entry. What they did with Winter Soldier was just, you know, a step in the right direction for Marvel. Story driven, character driven, great character development and, and uh, you know, a, a, a real relationships between characters that meant something. And you really, really got a sense of who Captain America was as a person as opposed to the first film. They really examined the character and we really realized that, you know, Captain America is just more than this straight edge, you know, goody two-shoes superhero. We actually, you know, got to learn a little bit about this guy on an emotional level. You sort of get that that relationship with Bucky here that Captain America will defend him to the bitter end. But I'll tell you something. This is if this is anything, this is the Iron Man show. This is the Robert Downey Jr. show. Iron Man, Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., you know, the guy uh, puts on a great performance as the eccentric billionaire. This guy's got funny, witty remarks, and he just overshadows Captain America in his own movie. He, without a doubt, he does. I, I mean, and this just shouldn't be. You know, if they have to, it, it just, you know, cut down on some of Iron Man's you know, quips here. I mean, he, he was making them look bad. I know that might sound crazy. And I know the Marvel fanboys are already worked up. They've, they've already th uh, put the thumbs down on the video. Without a doubt, they've already put the thumbs down on the video because it's something negative about something they like. And, you know, go right ahead. You, you do what you got to do if you need to thumbs down the video to make you feel, yourself feel better. But I'm actually offering an opinion, an opinion of somebody that's actually a Marvel fan. Now, I don't really get how Batman versus Superman is just completely dragged through the mud. People say that that story w was, um, you know, a, a huge mess. There was too much going on in that movie. How, 
How? How do you justify saying that when you're going to go ahead and pray civil war? There were so many things going on in this movie. It was just ridiculous. And also people like to say how boring some parts of Batman versus Superman was. Even during the, the dialogue heavy parts, at least we had an amazing performance from Ben Affleck. We had a great performance from Jesse Eisenberg as Alexander Luthor. Here, you're just getting boring, bland dialogue with no delivery at all. Um, you know, I didn't even notice this. I'm just throwing out random ideas for when I come up with the actual review. But actually, my, my, my friend came up with this. My two friends who I saw the film with actually both said this. There's the scene where Black Panther and Captain America are running, and they're running faster than a lot of cars on the road even. Captain America gets in a car, and it's like, why does he need to get in the car if he could run faster than all the other cars on the road? I didn't even notice this. I know the scene in which they're referring to, but I didn't even notice that. And if that is the case, and I'm pretty sure it is, that's just something that they overlooked that's just completely ridiculous. But that's neither here nor there. That's a very minor complaint. We're just talking about minor, you know, logic complaints here. But this, it's just, this is not my kind of movie. It, it, it really isn't. I mean, the pacing couldn't get any worse. And, it, you know, that's... I hate to keep using Batman versus Superman as an example, but it was only it's only been about, you know, a month and a half since that movie came out. And the way how they just destroyed that movie critically, it was just so uncalled for. I I mean, and you want to go ahead and you want to praise this movie to, to you know, it, at least you know, when this movie you, it has all the same problems that you're blaming Batman versus Superman for having. And I could see those claims. I didn't never once said that I couldn't see it from that person's perspective about Batman versus Superman trying to do a little bit too much, trying to fit a lot into the movie. This movie had no right to be two and a half hours talking about Civil War here. This movie went on for way too long. They just they took forever to explain what was pretty much a very simple plot. And it's, you know, the way how they're getting the Avengers to fight each other is just silly. And one of my friends tried to explain it this way to me. Well, the villain, you keep saying, this, this is what she kept telling me, saying that the, the thing is, I'm contradicting myself. That the villain wasn't a big threat. I said the villain didn't seem like a big threat to me. She said that, well... You're being a hypocrite because the villain was a big threat because he actually got the Avengers to fight each other because they were disagreeing about the law and the sanctions placed on them on the government that they were only supposed to act alongside the um, the United Nations and, and, and shit like that, a whole bunch of legal stuff. Um, and I says, no, it's not being hypocritical. It's just like, you know, they wanted to blame Batman versus Superman for fucking everything under the sun. Alexander Luthor was at least a good villain. Here, this is just a plain, bland villain with nothing to offer from a performance or storyline standpoint. Yes, I understand that, it, you know, this movie kind of has a similar plot line where this guy's family got killed because of the Avengers actions, so... You know, they're pretty much using the same storyline from Batman versus Superman. I don't know if that's a coincidence, and I don't know how close this follows to the comic. Um, you know, but as, as, it, as, it, as it stands with Marvel fans, as long as they, they do a couple of nods to the comic, that's good enough for Marvel fans. And we saw this with Age of Ultron. We could be giving complete shit... And they're still going to lap it up because why they gave a couple of nods to the comic books. Forget about quality. Forget about acting. Forget about uh, character development and storyline development. Let's just focus on the couple of nods they paid to the comics. 
So you got Ant-Man in there, which I was very pleased to see. And by the way, if you haven't seen Ant-Man, that is a movie that is 10 times better than this one. The Ant-Man, you know, character-driven story. And that's the funny thing, how they refer to the individual solo movies as character-driven movies. Because that's exactly what they are. There's no character development. No one's developing here. We do see a little bit of development between Captain America and Bucky, but it's like... I still have to ask, how is this a Captain America movie? And you know what is so hilarious? I had another friend of mine that, you know, um, we just keep in touch with Facebook, a former co-worker of mine. I, I, I posted on my Facebook at how much I hated Spider-Man, how he looked in the, in the latest trail that came out before the film's release. I said I didn't like how he looked. He looked like the Macy's Day uh, balloon. And I didn't mean that, you know, he looked exactly how the balloon looked. But he looked he looked as if he were a balloon is what I meant by that statement. He says, oh, no, you know, it's just, you know, a rough draft. They're going to, you know, uh, change it. I was like, I was telling my, my, my friend, Christian is his name. I was saying, Christian, the movie comes out in two months. I think the movie's pretty much finalized. I don't think they're going to go back and edit it. He's like, no, no, it'll look good. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. Sure enough, it's the same shit. Spider-Man looks fucking terrible. He looks fucking awful. As far as the actor, not too bad. If I have to say another positive thing, if you notice, I am saying some positive things. This movie isn't a complete failure, but overall, it sort of is. Um, so, you know, this is a young Spider-Man. I think that once again, he's got the sarcasm down. Um, you know, there was some funny lines that he was speaking. And the, the problem is that I'm going to take away from this is the fact that he was CGI'd the whole time. Whatever happened to a guy in the suit, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, there's certain parts, but the whole entire time, Spider-Man has to be CGI just because they want to make the fucking Ives move? I, I mean, are you kidding me? And then when Spider-Man gets thrown to the ground, um, and I forget who's talking to him, I think it's Tony Stark when, when he's on the ground, He that finally he's wearing a suit, uh, in, you know, but... It looks like a Spider-Man costume you'd buy from Party City, for fuck's sake. I mean, you just can't win here. I, 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 I mean, oh God, guys, this movie just did so many things wrong. It, it, it just it had all the wrong pacing, all the wrong direction. And this is the thing. If this is the way the Marvel movies are going, count me out. Just, just count me out. I mean, this was not a Captain America movie. How dare they actually falsely advertise this as a Captain America movie when, if anything, it's more of an Iron Man movie. It's more of an Avengers movie more than anything it was. This was Avengers 3. If this is not Avengers 3, then what is Avengers 3 going to be? This was Avengers 3. It was the Avengers. And I don't care what anybody says. And if you want to just, you know, this movie should have been called Marvel Civil War. And you might, guys might be saying, oh, Brad, why does it matter? You know, why does it matter? If they're going to call this Captain America, you bet your ass I expect this to be centered around Captain America. Not the whole entire Avengers. I mean, are you kidding me? This is like if they did an X-Men movie and it was like more of Fantastic Four than X-Men. You, you know, you could put Fantastic Four in there, but it's mostly supposed to be about the X-Men. There's like times when Captain America is on screen for a pretty long time. And this is just pretty much unacceptable. And this ain't nitpicking. This ain't just, you know, oh, Brad, why does it matter? It's all Marvel anyway. I all know what the thing. Oh, it gives nods to the comics. I don't give a shit about that. You know what I care about? And I've said it time and time again, and I don't care how many times I get trolled thumbed down, uh, complained against, you know, it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter what you think. You like the video, that's great. You don't like the video, that's too damn bad. It r Really, you got to live with my opinion. And I know people are going to go ape shit just by me saying this because the movie's got 92% on Ryan Tomatoes. And God forbid I, I, I'm i the 8% that doesn't agree with uh, those reviews. So, 
you know, it's like, I, I don't know why the critics would go gaga for this, as they do. They don't usually respond very well to the superhero movies, which leads me to believe that they've been paid off, that, that the critics have been paid off by Disney. And it's not really that far-fetched. It's, it's happened before. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, this movie is just... It's an example of just how hypocritical the critics are, hypocritical the fans are. You, you know, you want to tear apart, apart one movie for having a bunch of problems. It didn't fit, you know, it wasn't your cup of tea, so you tore it apart. Well, I'm, I'm here to say that this movie wasn't my cup of tea. And I'm a Marvel guy. Guys, I walked in there with a fucking Spider-Man shirt, and you all know I've got the fucking Todd McFarlane tattoo of Spider-Man number one on my fucking bicep. I love Spider-Man. I, 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 when I was a kid, I was living vicariously through Spider-Man, the Fox Kids show, the fucking comics. Spider-Man was my world. Just because Spider-Man's in the movie, I'm not going to praise it. You guys have seen my review of Amazing Spider-Man 2 when I, when I reviewed that movie two years ago. You saw how I tore that movie apart. And that was with good reason. That had a lot of of uh, it was it was a pretty reputable review i believe because the the movie had a lot of problems it did and we're not going to sit here and ignore it i'm not going to sit here and ignore it just cuz i'm a fan see the, the thing is i'm a fan so i guess i'm automatically biased but see the thing is i still remain critical i still remain truthful i didn't like that he was all cgi the actor not bad i got to see him in a full uh, feature length um, film before I really give my, my judgment call but this this movie just tried to do uh, too much too damn much and even what they did do was not enough it really wasn't and there were times when I really felt that this movie felt empty you know once again you got a bunch of action scenes and none of them are really that memorable I'm going to be perfectly honest with you guys. You want to go ahead and say that they're memorable to you. But like I said, what I consider memorable, Ant-Man goes subatomic. Spider-Man stopping the tree, the train in Spider-Man 2. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the final battle in, in Days of Future Past. Um, and all the X-Men getting obliterated in, in the future from all the advanced Sentinels. You know, you want these emotional fight scenes, these, these emotional action scenes. You just don't want a bunch of shit spliced together that's all CGI. And everybody else looked good. I, I'll, I'll say that. But Spider-Man looked like fucking shit. All right, guys, um, I'm really hungry. I've got a pastrami sandwich sitting right next to me in the fucking seat here. I got to go in, go in my house. I got to fucking eat. I'm fucking starved. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'll do the review tomorrow, I guess, do a full-length review, and I'll try to come up with some more concrete ideas and opinions and criticisms and also positives. Let's not forget about the positives. All right, guys, I'll uh, see you next time.